Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Whiskey Wars. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, Ethan and Katie from Drifting Grams joining us today because they also have this fantastic bottle. So uh, we'll get a couple different opinions on it today, which is cool. Uh, so you don't have to just take my word for it. Um, yeah, so today we are reviewing Rebecca Creek uh, Double Barrel uh, Bourbon finished in Spanish oak. Uh, it is a cast strength bourbon. It is sourced, uh, as the thumbnail suggests, from Indiana, so we all know what that means, uh, MGP. Yep. But um, from everything I've read, it is aged in Texas, which is cool, and then also finished in Spanish oak, which also uh, makes a pretty big difference. And uh, so it still has that MGP profile, which we'll get into here in a little bit, but I think it, uh, what Rebecca Creek has done is kind of hidden that pretty well, which is a positive for me, because... I personally um, find uh, MGP in general to be, especially when it's young, to be kind of floral, which I'm not huge on. So uh, yeah. let me go ahead and get some pour, and we'll talk about how this differs a little bit. Um, in your guys' opinion, uh, you think, hey, do you think uh, that that what, what I just said there is true? That the double barreling, and then of course aging in Texas. Do you think that's kind of changed the profile pretty significantly? Oh yeah. Yeah, Definitely. this is completely different than any other MGP that I've had. Um, yeah. It's so I don't know if they bought these barrels at four years or if they bought the distillate and brought it down. But I want to say it's like it's got two different agings under its belt, and and like part in Indiana, part in Texas. Yeah, I want to. I want to. Th I th I think that's correct. Right, that could that could well be. Yeah, um, I, I know they're a fairly new company. I uh, did a little research on them. I think they started in. 09, I want to say. Um, and they are slowly expanding their distribution, which is always good to hear. Unfortunately, not in Kentucky or Tennessee, I don't think. No. Um, yeah, they're, uh, according to what I've read, they're in 17 states, uh, that including uh, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Indiana. Uh, then as well, of course, Texas, Georgia, Missouri, Kansas. Colorado, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and New Mexico. So maybe one of those states is near where you are, or you got a buddy that is uh, there. So, you know, whatever the case. Um, I don't know where you guys got yours from, but I know the uh, the wonderful Mr. Great Shot uh, got this bottle for me. So cheers to you, Mark, wherever you are. I guess he's probably still out in Colorado, so. Yeah, we got ours uh, from Houston. We had my mom go to Specs and pick them up. Yep. Okay, there you go. Family. Gotta yeah. love it. There's like a specs like a mile from her house, and as soon as we tried it with Dan, um, Dusty, uh, we had her go pick him out, pick him up immediately. Yeah. For like yeah. 58, 58 or 60 bucks a bottle or something yeah. like that. Yeah, um, so the way I came about uh, getting talked into buying this was also Dan, because uh, he, he was talking about it on a live stream. The thing is, I'd already had a sample that uh, Sullivan in the Woods had sent me, um, and I don't know, it just didn't hit right that night. Of course, it was probably because I was a few drinks in, uh, <laughs> you know, so that makes a difference. And um, on a fresh palate, uh, tried this bottle because it was highly recommended by uh, Dusty Dan, and also Great Shot had a bottle and said, hey, yeah, man, you got to get one. Um, and so Great Shot picked one up for me and, of course, hand-delivered it. Um, and, man, it's first... Poor. Uh, I just fell in love with this bottle. So let's talk about why. Um, notes that I get on this. There's still a little bit of that floralness that you get from the MGP on the nose. Um, I would say it's brighter on the nose than it is the palette for me. Um, yeah. But you, there's still a lot of that just dark Texas funk that I love. Not really in Texas funk. It's probably the wrong word. But just the darkness uh, that you get. Uh, from a Texas. So lots of barrel char, which I'm all yes. about that. Lots of oak presence. A um, little bit of a molasses for me on the nose. A little brown sugar happening and like a real true dark brown sugar. Um, yeah, just very much dark sugars and all the, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe creme brulee, although I feel like creme brulee is maybe a lighter than probably this. Uh, but yeah, toasted sugars and things. It's, I agree, agree with that Texas funk that you said, man. Um, like, it's not a huge amount. It's not like a Balcones pick or something like that. No. But it's there, right? You can tell this spent some time in heat. And it's it's got just a little bit of a, a funky, interesting back end to, to make it really interesting. Yep. 
first off, cheers everybody in chat before we go any farther. Um, of course, fifth quarter tailgate, Scott in the house. Cheers, uh, Chris Tats, Doug H in the house as well, uh, saying hi to all of us. Tim Swope, interested in the Spanish oak. I have their standard double bear. Okay, yeah. Uh, I saw that today when I was kind of researching them. Um, would love to hear your thoughts on that, Tim, just as comparison. Uh, Roger Randall saying cheers as well. Uh, Smoke and fire, cheers, gang. And also David Bass in the house and Randy Road. Cool. Good to see you guys. Um, I'll let you guys go ahead and give a little more thoughts before I, I say any more. Um, you want to talk palate? I'll, I'll take a sip and think about it while you guys uh, do the same, whoever would like to go first. Go ahead, Kate. There is a ton of oak on the on the front of the palate, uh, but the spice uh, from I guess it's got to be the Spanish oak comes out, and it's not like it's a, a baking spice mixed with like just pepper, for me. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's, it's a spicy gal for sure, which uh, I like that. But uh, Ethan, you. Yeah, I agree. It's um, I would say that there's some sweetness in there too, like that really, really dark sweetness. That that with the Spanish oak, it almost has like a French oak note to me. Like it doesn't quite go cake frosting, but it's sweet, yeah. sweet. Um, oh yeah, in a really dark way. Yeah. Um, for me, it's it's very desserty. Um, but I don't yeah. know what dessert you would have that would have this much spice in it. Um, yeah. So. It's it's for me. I kind of get like a little bit of like dark cherry up front before the spice hits you, mm -hmm. and then that spice explosion just happens. And um, yeah, I don't know of a dessert, but it's it's very sweet. I mean, super super sweet, uh, but in a good way. Not like grossly sweet, but just a really nice sweetness. Uh, and just as soon as it hits your tongue, it's just an explosion of. Uh, you know it's there. <laughs> you don't have Definitely. to search for the notes. They're bold and in your face, which I always like that in a bourbon or really any whiskey. Just very flavorful. Um, yeah, yeah, but I really do like that uh, that spice note uh, from the oak. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. done. A there, for me, it's not. It hasn't gone so far into the oak realm that it's going tannic. I don't right. get right. much of that. Um, you didn't look like you wanted to say a little more there. Well, so I was going to agree with you. I think that's where um, calling it Texas funk might not be correct for some people. Some people, they hear Texas funk, right? And they think that heavy tannin, almost mesquite, like it's too much. And it's not It's not nearly that far. It's just yeah. a little bit of like this funky, wet oak note, just a little bit, right? Just enough yeah. to be another layer without overpowering the whiskey. Well, another thing, too, that I get that I relate to uh, Texas funk is usually, especially on the finish, on a really dark Balcones or, say, an Iron Root or something like that, there's a little bit of this kind of prune or, like, dark plum note. I don't know if you guys find that. And so that's what I that's what I kind of relate to being the funk. Uh, gotcha. A little bit of a pruny note, which I think works okay with the overall profile of most Texas bourbons. I can't say all because Garrison Brothers exists. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah um yeah also yeah it certainly can go tannic as well i mean like uh the balcones true blue is is pretty pretty funky yep. Yep. um in and a good way for me but uh can can be pretty pretty funky yeah yeah um, definitely so i believe this was like 60 65 bucks uh, i guess that's probably about what you guys paid as well yeah um yep. what are your guys thoughts value wise uh in that price range I mean, value-wise, uh, I think it's incredible value. We we bought a, one for a friend just because it's like, what, what bottles these days coming out of MGP are you finding for under $60 readily available? Especially yeah, a double barrel. Strength, Especially a yeah. double barrel. Yeah, cast um, strength, double barrel. Yeah, yeah, just tons of flavor. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that point. Yeah, it's hard and, to find. And even in that price range, uh, I was kind of looking around what I have that's in that similar price point, I think this thing, I don't know if it's the best in the price point, but it's it's up there. It's it's a really great bottle for me. Uh, I would say top five in the 60 range. Um, yeah, I would say it's probably one of the most interesting six-year MGPs that I've had. Uh, best, I'm with you. Like, there's, a, there's an argument you can make for a number of bottles, but as far as six-year MGP goes, this is so freaking interesting. Like, there's so much, and each time I go back to it, like, this time it's drinking hotter than it did when I first had it. 
when I first had it, I tried it. Well, I tried the sample with Dan and back in May. And I went, what? That's like 102 proof, right? And he busted out laughing. He was like, nope, nope, it's 122. It just doesn't drink its proof to no. me normally. But today it does, right? Yeah, this, well, this is my first pour of the day. I don't know where you guys are at. But uh, so, yeah, it when it's your first pour of the day, it, it punches a little harder, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that that yeah. spice especially hits you pretty good. But I like that. Like I, I've always said, mm -hmm. I, I kind of want whiskey to kick my ass. So, and this yeah. this does that a little bit, but in a good way. Um yeah, I'm I, I'm in love with this bottle, and uh, I'm probably gonna have to talk to some friends about getting a second. Um, oh, definitely. Well, yeah. And they're all single barrels too. That's another nice thing about them. So, yeah. next one's probably gonna be different, right? Uh, I guess depending on where you get it. Yeah, and uh, as as Hatfield Barbecue and uh, Carnivore said, um, yeah, a lot of buzz around this bottle for sure. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, probably get them while you can because uh, I know I'm not the first one to talk about this bottle by any means. So I imagine that they're. The, the whiskey community is probably aware of this now, but I just wanted to do a review because I thought it was just such an interesting bottle and uh, just a really cool find that not a ton of people are talking about. So maybe right. still somewhat a hidden gem. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. well, and people are going crazy over the 13th colony double Oak. Right. And I wouldn't say this is a direct competitor, but if you're looking for a nice double barreled whiskey, like this definitely hits that list. And for a half, for half the price. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it, it may not be equivalent, um, although I like the darkness of this that the Thirteenth Colony doesn't have quite as much of. Um, okay. Still, still good, uh, but I would say if you like the lighter profile, I would say the Thirteenth Colony is maybe more well-rounded. I don't know. Uh, I, does that sound right? Um, I can I see guess, that. It does. Yeah. It doesn't have that Texas like heavy oak note to it and has a yeah. different type it, it's almost a the 13th colony is like very sweet as opposed to being a dark sweetness yeah and not quite as punchy in the spice realm in my mind yeah, either. yeah. but uh either way very cool bottle um anybody else in chat have it i don't shred just said rebecca also cheers buddy good to see you man uh i see mine is also spanish oaked it's a uh, oh store pig okay the sweetness nice. is in it Reminds me of a good carrot cake. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see it, yeah. Uh, Roscoe P. Coltrane, also in the house. Cheers, buddy. Good to see you, man. Uh, in two weeks, three hours, we fly out to Oz. Heck yeah, man. I can't wait for that, Chris. Yeah, um, awesome. Well, as we always do on these reviews, uh, i got to score it. And um, it's one of my favorites in the price range. So I'm going high again. Two weeks in a row. Um, I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm trying to decide, is this a better value slash also whiskey than my rye from last week? Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to go the same. I'm going to go another 9 out of 10. I love this bottle. Um, okay. Score score from the Turks, what, what are you guys at on it? I'd say like 8, 8, 9, somewhere in that range. Yeah, if I'm if I'm looking at value, I call it a 9. But overall, I'd give it a 7.5 or an 8. Okay, cool. I can deal with that. Um, Roger Randall saying not normally uh, quick on Penelope, but had a new release locally of a nine year private uh, reserve at 109 proof, and that has wow. me interested in that's the older the first industry. Effort. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that's exciting that they're doing that. You know, and just overall, I, I think last words on, on this one for me is I just appreciate it when distilleries are doing something with the things they're sourcing from. So I appreciate that yeah. Rebecca Creek took the time to kind of make this their own thing rather than just sourcing it and throwing a label on it. Um, I hope we see more and more of that and less of the thing I just said, <laughs> because I'm pretty tired of a thousand bottles of the same MGP. So I, I hope that more distilleries start, you know, taking it to the state they're in, uh, aging it at least some time there and uh, doing their own interesting finishes, kind of like the Penelope that uh, Roger mentioned. So hopefully we see more of that going forward. Um, that, that would be great. Anyway, folks, uh, we're running actually a little long for these uh, live reviews, but uh, cheers, everybody. Thank you, Turks, for joining me. Much appreciated. Uh, glad to hear your thoughts on it as well. And as always, folks, just remember, you can never have too much good whiskey. Cheers, everybody. We're cheers. out of here.